Hello and good morning, everyone. This is Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries, and this is February 23rd, 2020. And I am the pastor and prophetic voice of this ministry. And today we're speaking on ever preserving petitions. And when you place petitions before the Lord, that means you're praying. So today we're gonna to talk about and teach about praying. We're coming from St. Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. 5 to 13. And um, on today, those are people who are absent. Uh, Deaconess Ruffin is, was not feeling well, so keep her in prayer. And Minister Maurice Hollingsworth, I have not heard from him, so I hope all is well with him. And we'll keep him in prayer as well. Amen? And amen. So we're coming from verse... Number five, and most of these verses are self-explanatory, with which a child can understand. When we're talking about the synoptic gospels, the symbols, and the teachings of Jesus, who taught with simplicity and an understanding. He taught with a, where a child could understand, and he did not use homiletics or homiletics or dialectics. He used the word. Uh, he is not a theologian. He is our savior, but he also walk with prophetic utterances and the ministry of deliverance. So he had a lot of gifting inside of him. But Luke the physician is one who took spiritual notes and spiritual flight with the Christ on his journey as his ministry became abroad and as his ministry took off. Mm -hmm. So verse five says, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves meaning bread for a friend of mine is his journey is to come to me and I have nothing to set before him so would you go at midnight to give your uh, somebody help or help out a friend you should that's the Christian thing to do it's showing love and it's also showing compassion if your friend called you at 12 o'clock at night for prayer, get about your bed of comfort and pray for them, talk to them, minister to them, deal with the situation, assess the situation, but only in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Would you get up and help a friend? Yes, I would, and I have done it. And to God be all the glory. It says, for a, a friend of mine and his journey has come to me. And I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7 says, And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are within bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Now that's usually the answer that we give certain people. When we know we can't help them. But God wants us to be a help to many and it's also teaching the model prayer. Let us not forget verses uh, one, two, four, the model prayer, our daily bread. Mm -hmm. He's teaching them how to pray, but that is just the model prayer. We don't pray that daily, we pray and intercede as intercessors. And when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Ghost himself, he, not an it or a thing, him, he is the intercessor. He will pray through you. Mm -hmm. And it says here, he is not troubled, he's not going to get up. This is a parable. But verse 8 says, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because it is important or the opportunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. That's compassion you're supposed to give. But even in your giving, use wisdom. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Take advantage of you, even in your giving. But to be very mindful of who we give and share with. And you have to ask the Holy Seed of God and the wisdom of God, is it okay? People see that you have a giving heart and they'll take advantage of your giving heart. And that's a dangerous thing to do, is to hurt somebody and take advantage of their kindness. Yes, and it says, I say unto you, as, as a friend, it is important to rise and many as he needed. 
give as much as you can. Right? But allow God to lead you. And you need the Holy Spirit really to lead you to give to people. People can tell you anything in this day, oh, I don't have, I need this, that, and the other. But when you go check on them and open their doors, you can tell what they have. You have to be very, very mindful. Uh, verse 9 says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. Believe in your asking. That coincides with Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and number 8. And it says, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone who asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Uh -huh. Those verses uh, goes into Jesus encouraging and perseverance in prayer. That means you, as a believer, you must have a consistent prayer life, persistent in prayer. You know, uh, uh, the book of Thessalonians said, pray without ceasing. I believe that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse uh, 16. And St. James chapter number 5, verse 16 says, The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. You must pray and be fervent, but be perseverant in prayer. The tense of Greek verb in designated continued action. This means we must keep on asking, seeking, knocking. Asking implies conscientious of need and belief and that here God, it says here, that God hears our prayers. Let me read it slowly, I don't want to mess up the wording. God hears your prayer. So while you're knocking, you're really asking. And he wants to hear what's really in your heart. Are you asking in belief or are you asking as the sea wave tossed to and fro, wavered in your faith? In your faith, you shouldn't waver. When you ask, believe, and then say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Asking, seeking implies conscientious need of belief. God hears your prayers. Seeking implies earnest petitions, meaning placing petitions before the Lord along the obedience to the will of God. Knocking implies perseverance in coming to God. Even he does not not respond quickly. Sometimes God takes his time answering. And sometimes that can be very, very irritable. But he heard you the first time. It's not that God is getting on your nerve. God wants to see where your faith is. Where is your faith? Is your faith in who? Man or me, your faith should be in God because your faith comes from God through Jesus Christ. Mustard seed faith, meaning believing. Mm -hmm. Christ assurance that those who ask will receive. Ask is based seeking first the kingdom of God, recognizing God's fatherly goodness and love. Praying according to God's will. Maintaining fellowship with Christ, obeying Christ, and see effective prayer. You must have a strong, effective prayer life. Not, and it always, not always, give me, give me, give me, give me. When you ask the first time, he heard you. Stop begging. Believe. I was praying about something yesterday. I'm not begging no more. I believe it shall be done. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. When you ask, believe, and believe in faith. Believe in God is going to do it. Speak it into the atmosphere. Send the word back out, and it shall not return void. The weapon shall form against you, but it will not prosper. The word is strong. It's strengthening. It's encouraging. It's uplifting. It moves. The word moves upon the heavens when it's upon the earth. Place, uh, when you go into prayer, make sure you set the atmosphere with worship first and then praise, and then pray. And then those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit of God, use your heavenly language. Use your heavenly language. Speaking in tongues, I'm not gonna do it all out here, be flamboyant this morning. But use your heavenly language. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is important for those who are prayer warriors. If you do not pray 
in English or in tongues and really mean it from the indebtedness of your heart, it will not be effective. It will not be effective. Believe in what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. And it says, verse 10, St. Luke chapter 11, verse 10 says, So everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and him that knocketh, it shall be opened. God gives you opportunity when you pray and seek his face. The door is open, door of opportunity. That's what open door means, open opportunity. God has given you the space and the opportunity to go forward in prayer. There's what we call the throne room, the pavilion, the high place, the holy place. When you feel lifted, when you come out of prayer, you don't feel bowed down. If you ever went into prayer and you felt a bondage or a heaviness or fell asleep, that's warfare. And when you ever went into prayer and fasting, that's why you pray, but you fast. And don't tell everybody when time you pray. Don't ever tell everybody when you're fasting, get to yourself and get into God's presence. And, and this one thing we need to kill in Christendom, stop all this isolation. Stop pretending how, how holy you are. And be holy. Get away from that. Isolation brings warfare of the mind. Be led by the Spirit of God. Even when you're outside, pray within. On the bus, in the car, at a friend's house. Pray. Be consistent in your prayer time. Place those petitions before a holy God. And allow him to move inside of you. Pray effective. When you feel your heavenly language kicking in, allow him to speak through you. Mm -hmm. That's in depthness. That's when you start tapping into the oil. Mm -hmm. Yes, tap into the oil. Verse 11 says, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, that is as a father, will give him a stone. Or if he ask of a fish, will he give him a serpent. Like, he's asking you things, but would you be contrary and give him the opposite of what he's asking for? Mm -hmm. Or is he shall ask of an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Verse 13 in closing says, if then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit to them that ask of him. Mm -hmm. Your heavenly father won't give evil gifts. He'll give you good gifts. He'll give you things that what you need. Stop. This is one thing as Christians we have to stop doing. Don't give me what I want. Give me what I need. God knows your need. God knew I was in need this month. A promise was made to me and it didn't come to pass. But it came through somebody else. And it was more than enough. Believe me when I tell you, God came through on last week. And I mean, he did it, and I'm doing things. God is getting ready to bless this ministry. I don't care who comes or goes. Obey God. God knows who needs to be here. God knows he has your back. If God has put you on assignment, even in prayer time, prayer warriors, you can't pray with everybody. Mm-hmm. Do that which the Holy Spirit of God has given you to do. And verse 13 says, this verse probably does not refer to the impartation of the Holy Spirit at new birth, St. John 3 and 3, since at conversion, all believers are automatically given the indwelling of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. There's several verses that go with that, Romans, 10, Romans 8 and 9, verse 2, 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. See article on regeneration of the disciples. Rather, the verse most likely refers to the baptism in the Holy Ghost that Christ promised to followers. Uh -huh. And they go from prayer to baptism of the Holy Ghost. Excuse me, my little nose, a little blushed here this morning. But God wants us to press persevere, placing a uh, persevering, ever per persevering petition. This is too funny. The enemy tried to make it tough time this morning. Ever persevering petitions, meaning be consistent in prayer. Be consistent. Be consistent while you pray. Stay before God until you get an answer. 
go into prayer. Make sure you pray, uh, worship, praise, and then pray. Make sure you're fasting and then pray. When you fast, you break a lot of yokes. Yokes are being broken off your own life and the people who come in contact with you. Yokes will be destroyed. When you pray, seek up quietly. And he will reward you openly. Don't pray vain, repetitious words so that you may be seen of man. But pray until God get in your dialect and cause you to pray effective. You don't have to pray so loud until you shake the roof. Pray and, and, and show off and do theatrics. You don't have to do all of that. Pray until God give you a spiritual breakthrough. But there's other scriptures that God has given me this morning. Be persistent in your prayer time. St. John 3 and 3 says, Jesus answered. And this is uh, Nicodemus visits Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible doctrine, regeneration, being born again. And it will be better for you to be born again. Only time God hears a sinner's prayer is when it comes to salvation. We have to be very, very mindful. How we pray and what to pray for. Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I pray for? What is your will for me on today? Romans 8 and 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You need the Holy Spirit to pray and be effective. You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has gifts. Remember this, it is not an it or a thing, nor a fact, but it is him, the truth of God. Uh -huh. The truth of God. All believers from moments of their spiritual birth and faith in Jesus Christ have the Holy Spirit. It comes with a package. You must have the Holy Spirit. Doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Not all believers, however, are baptized in the Holy Spirit. The indwelling presence of the Spirit is related to the new birth. Baptism of the Spirit is an empowerment experience related in intonation of charismatic gifts. Taken from Acts chapter number 1, verses 8, chapter 8, verse 17, 19, and 6. And that is true. Some people will not experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It depends on where you are at that particular time. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is for today for every believer. There is no shortcuts in the wilderness and there is no shortcuts in Christianity. If you do not have the infilling or indwelling power or the Holy Ghost, you need it for today. For what we're going through in this world, you need to be born again. There's another thing going on where people are religious and really not saved. You ever heard that person say, I'm going to take my religion off and beat you up? Well, baby, you need to be crushed in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost need to crush that. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost so you won't be thinking carnal. That's carnal talk. You're talking like the people in the book of Rome. You need to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And it is a gift given unto us by through Jesus Christ. When he left, he said, I will give unto you and you will receive unto me a comforter. St. John 14 and 16. This is part of my doctrinal history. Once a believer of the apostolic faith and I still go by the teaching and I still go by home to get more teaching. One thing about a prayer warrior, you'll know which, which direction you should be going in. The Holy Spirit does not misguide anyone. The Holy Spirit guides us and gives us the truth. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And you need to have your Heavenly Father's righteous seed in you. You don't have to prove to anybody how righteous you are. 
how safe you are, how much you believe you are. They can tell by how you carry yourself. Live the life before the people. God is not raising up actors and actresses. He's not raising up people with masks on their faces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't pretend. People can tell when you're putting on. In this day, I have never seen so much entertainment. People are entertaining the people. And just because you know how to move the crowd don't mean you called. Yes. Make sure you prayed up. Even if some of you elders and evangelists and prophets, before you accept an engagement, go into prayer and ask God as it is will. Make sure it's God's will. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen and twenty. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? This is Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthian church. Still talking about prayer, but your body becomes your temple. Uh-huh. Which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own. When you are born again, you're not of your own. You're of God's now. You're going back to the, the days of Eden. Genesis 1 and 1, the God of the beginning who made Adam and Eve. He gave them dominion and power and authority. He expects us as the believers of God, of Christ, to have that same dominion. But now Jesus Christ is the atonement. As you are born again, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. And your first ministry is the ministry of intercession. You are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Mm -hmm. It says here, as Christians, your body is a personal dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, where the spirit is God's mark upon that belong to him, because your spirit lives in in you and you belong to God and your body never will be defiled by an impurity or evil whether or immorality thoughts desires deeds films books magazines or internet rather you you must live such a way to honor and please God with your body that means you must be spiritually balanced and you must live the life in front of the people of God and behind closed doors. Do not allow sexual immorality, porn, sexual desires, or people to bring in unclean spirits to you. We've been marked until the day of redemption. We cannot live sloppy. If you live sloppy before the people, you will birth out a sloppy congregation and you will birth out sloppy members who live a flip-flop, upside-down, wavering in your faith type of way. And that is not what God is calling for. He is calling for holiness, where which no woman, boy, or girl can see the Lord. Do not live sloppy, and don't pray sloppy. You got people right now, I asked somebody to pray here a couple of weeks ago, I'm not trying to be funny. They fumbled over the prayer because they are living sloppy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as you pray before the Lord, ask the Lord to make it mold and shape you. Matthew 6, verse 10.
And it says here, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our prayer must be concerned for the kingdom and God's earth now within our ultimate fulfillment in the future. We must pray for Christ's return, for this establishment, God's eternal kingdom, new heaven and new earth. We must pray for a spiritual presence and manifestation of the kingdom of God now. This includes asserting God's power among his people in order to destroy the works of Satan, heal the sick, save the lost, promote righteousness, and pour out the Holy Spirit of his people. Oh well, yes, this is the way we must pray. In Matthew 6 and verse 33, it says here, but seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. We must seek his kingdom first. Stop seeking things and seek him. I heard one woman tell me years ago and I know it tickled me because I knew she was off. She was a believer slinging oil all over the place. Glory, hallelujah, and all over the building. And uh, just doing what she wanted to do. I was praying that God convict you because uh, I needed some money. You can pray that conviction all you want. I don't owe you anything. We're playing. God is not the God of money. He's a God of holiness and righteousness. So that was all. God is not a play toy. He's holy 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year, 12 months out of the year. So that right there was totally off when she said that to me. She wasn't as holy as she said she was. So we have to be very, very careful. But when you see God's kingdom, everything else aligned up with the word. You have to have your spiritual priorities in line. You just don't come God with just this, 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 money, 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 money. Years ago, in 1992, and it was Easter that year, uh, that month, and uh, I was fasting and praying, and the Lord was beginning to deal with my inner ear about the very voice of God and the ministry of the prophetic. And the Lord said that morning to me, he said, Randy, today you're going to hear some things. Be mindful. And I said, okay, Father. And that morning we was pulling out chairs. I won't say where I was because I'm not to expose and tear down somebody's ministry. We don't do that here at Prophetic Fire or War Ministries. We do not do that. And um, we were pulling out chairs for service. And you know, on Easter and Christmas, those are the biggest services in church or Christendom. And uh, I heard a man say in the sanctuary, hurry up and pull them chairs out. We need that money. And the Lord said that right there, there's your answer. He said, son, when I call you to lead, don't you say what he just said. That man right now barely got any members. That man right now barely has any members. You better be careful what comes out your mouth. You embarrass yourself and you embarrass God's kingdom when you start saying carnal things like that. Mm -hmm. And it says here, those who follow Christ are urged to seek above all God's kingdom and righteousness. The verb seek implies being continually observed in search of something or making strenuous and diligent efforts to obtain something. Christ refers of two objects, of seeking the kingdom of God we must earnestly have to rule power of God's demonstration mm -hmm. in our lives and assemblies. We must pray that the kingdom of God will come in mighty, with a mighty power, and the Holy Spirit will save sinners to deliver people from demonic bondage and strongholds to heal 
the sick and magnify the name of the Lord. Jesus, the article of the kingdom of God. And when we pray before the Lord, that is what we're doing. We're seeking God's kingdom. We're not seeking ourselves. We're not seeking people, but we're seeking God's kingdom. So while we're seeking God's kingdom, we have to be mindful of what proceeds out of our mouths. One last one, and we're going to close out. The book of James, I mean the book of John. Chapter number Verse 14 and 15. And it says here, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that he have the petition that we desire of him. Our prayers and our lives are present to God in the submission and confidence according to his will as revealed in scripture. And otherwise, by the Holy Spirit, we know that God's will in many instances causes it to be revealed in scripture. As other times, it becomes clearly. Only as we earnestly seek his will, once we know his will above given issues, that we ask in confidence and in faith. Then we do this and we know he hears us, that his purpose for us will be accomplished. So ask and believe. And it says that the certainties of faith, as a believer, we all have mustard seed faith. All of us have faith in God. When we ask, when he sees your faith escalate and go higher, that means you believe. That means you, he heard you. He's going to move on your behalf. And at the end of your prayer, give him thanks and praise for it's already been done. That means you're speaking faith into the right direction. God wants to know what's in your heart. And what's ever in your heart, don't come out your mouth. Speak the word. And believe in what you're speaking. Speak by faith. Not doubt. And get away from people that are doubtful. Don't hang around doubtful people. Kill that spirit in Jesus' name. Amen? So we're going to close out, and we thank God for this Sunday school. Ever perceiving petitions. That means placing petitions before God. And asking God in belief, and really believing. Have a prayer life. Every true apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist, even ministers and elders and prophetess, should have a prayer life. Even deacons should be fervent prayers, warriors before the Lord. You should always have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. You should have a prayer life and be fervent in your prayer time. There have been many of times, to God be all the glory, that I've walked in services. And I'm going to give you a scripture and I'm going to stand on this too. To God be all the glory. When they see me with my clergy on, and asked me who I was and said, could you be so kind and come up here and do a word of prayer? I'll never forget it was 2012, the same year I became elder. I went back home to my old church, the Greater Refuge Temple. To God be all the glory. And uh, the pastor at that time was Apostle Robert L. Sanders. His son now is pastoring, Robert L. Sanders Jr., who is now going up for bishop. Congratulations. Bishop Robert O. Sanders II, I am not surprised. I'm not surprised. And of course, you know I'm proud of you. I told you already. Um, and he always drip on me, but that's my boy. But uh, <laughs> he's funny, I'm seriously funny. And um, I went there for Sunday morning service, and I asked my bishop at that time, Bishop Dwight Brown, was it okay to go back home to visit? And they're having a homegoing celebration for former members for homecoming, excuse me, homecoming. And um, he said, sure, go. This is always good back to go pay, pay homage to those who helped birth you. And he was very humble about it. And I went to Sunday morning and Sunday night service. 
So while Sunday service was proceeding into worship, they had a, a time of prayer. So as I'm standing in the front row with my elders attire on, you know, not prideful, not arrogant, I'm not that person, we don't do that. Always stay humble. And um, his son kept watching me. And I talked to somebody, I said, this, this man is getting ready to ask me to come up there and do that prayer. I said, watch what I tell you. And sure enough, he said, at this time, we're gonna ask that elder, Randy Newman, come up to the front and lead us in a word of prayer. It did, I was just shocked, but I was not surprised. So I went around the rail and walked all the way through and got the mic and went straight in. As the organist, tone it down a bit, I need to pray. I said, tone it down just a bit. And we went into prayer and um, people, a mother who's still there, I, I haven't seen her in a while, Mother Hazel Grimes came to me after service and said, you still got it, honey. She said, you a praying man. She said, I ain't never heard a man pray that hard. She said, you a praying man. She said, don't you lose that. You don't know season mothers that can tell you when you're on and when you're off. Mother told it. She said, you keep that prayer line, honey. That means stay persistent. Keep your nose clean, keep your mouth washed. Keep your head up, stay in prayer. A real man, a woman of God should always have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. A prayer life, a prayer life. Stay persistent, believers of Christ. No matter what it looks like, God has you covered and he hears your prayer now. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord in this Sunday school hour, get to know him as Savior and Lord. He loves you on today, but according to Romans 10 and 8, and wrote, uh, Acts chapter 3 and 28. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and thou shalt be saved. That's Romans 10 and 9. But every one, every one believer must be filled with the Holy Ghost. You must be born again. You must be born again. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Let me quote it the right way. I'm going to stop all this quote and just really give you the scripture. Somebody told me about that and they were correct. Acts Two, and it says here, and then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be ye baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You must be born again first before you can start praying. Then when you receive the baptized in Jesus' name and, and filled with the Holy Ghost, then develop a life of prayer, a time of quietness and stillness so you can hear your Father's voice. God is always talking. But are we listening? God bless you all. I am pastor and prophetic voice, Randy G. Newman of Prophetic Fire and Word Ministries. And God bless you all. And I will see you in the next service. Good day.